Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me, folks, on this Wednesday, April 17th, 2024. It is 4 17 p.m. Eastern Time as I speak and record. Glory be to God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Folks, if we just did that 24 hours a day, just saying praise you, Lord, praise you, Lord, praise you, we still wouldn't even come close to the praise and glory he deserves. Everything he's given us, everything he continues to do, and the things that are yet to be made manifest. If you're watching this video, guess what? We haven't achieved that final prize yet. I'm going to call it a prize because the Bible will say that. That upward call, that heavenly crown, that final victory. When we can finally say, it is finished. It's already been finished for us. You know what I'm saying, guys? But just thank you so much for joining me. I continue to praise God for every one of you. And I've, I've been reading this one and looking at some scriptures and backgrounds. And I love today's background. And notice, I know a lot of times it sounds like a broken record, folks, but I can't help it. I, I love doing these backgrounds. And today's walk boldly with Jesus. Think about this. The disciples were walking with him physically. They were physically walking with Jesus, but they weren't so bold even with Jesus with them. Looking, uh, I don't even know if our, our scriptures talk about this. I'm not sure, folks. We'll get to that in a second. But I just, I think about, you know, the disciples when Jesus was asleep in the boat in a storm. The disciples were right there. Jesus was right there with them in the boat, with in the boat, and they freaked out and panicked. If if you can put yourself in their shoes today, knowing that that was Jesus, knowing what we know about him, we probably would react a little bit different than they did. Wouldn't you agree? I would think we would. But guess what? Now, something they didn't have. They had Christ with them. We got Christ in us. Just stuff we got to think about. But I mean, look at this background. Walk boldly with Jesus. There's one person right there, but that person's walking boldly because they know that Christ now dwells in them. And guys, once we can fully comprehend that, I'm telling you what, when you can fully grasp what that means, the same power, the very same power that raised Jesus Christ from the grave, that rose him from the grave and seated him in heaven is the same power that now dwells in you Nothing should phase you. Nothing should make you bat an eye. You guys, you should just have the confidence and the boldness of a roaring lion, like the lion of Judah. Amen. With that being said, today's title, Go Forward. I love all three of these words. Go forward unafraid. That's like three commands. That's like three commands. Go don't just sit stagnant, even though we're seated in heavenly places. God still wants to use these bodies. Forward. Don't look back. There's so much in the scriptures about looking back. Look at Lot's wife. She looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. So as I think that's one of the shortest verses in the Bible. Remember Lot's wife. Remember, she looked back. And there's a couple of verses and scriptures in there about anybody that puts their hand to the plow and looks back isn't fit for the kingdom of God. Quit, we got to quit looking back on the past, guys. We can learn and grow from the past. And again, I've said before, you know, when Satan likes to bring up your past, you know, he tries to tell you, don't try this because you remember what happened last time, man, rebuke him immediately and remind Satan of his future. Amen. And then unafraid. So go forward and you can unafraid, fear not, absolute faith, however you want to word that, guys. I love that title. And our scriptures, I've got highlighted today, John 6. Verses 61 through 71, <clears throat> excuse me, and our lead off verse is John 6, 68, and this is what the word of God says, and guys, again, this is another one, this, this verse by itself really doesn't make a whole lot of sense, it's still medicine, it's still medicine, and you're going to get this in you if you're listening, uh, it reads this, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. If you go back, please read these studies, guys. Read it. Let this stuff penetrate your heart. Today's devotional comes out of God calling, and this is how it reads. Go forward unafraid. Man, God, that, that sounds like something maybe we just need to repeat over and over for a few days. Go forward unafraid. You can say go, period, forward, period, unafraid, period, in the name of Jesus, exclamation point. <laughs> Health and strength, peace and happiness, and joy. They are all God's gifts, yours for the asking. In the spiritual and in the material world, there is no empty space. And as self and fears and worries depart out of your lives, it follows that the things of the spirit that you crave so rush in to take their places. Whew. 
Set your sight on things above. Set your sight on things unseen, not on things seen. Satan loves to show us the, the, the carnal, the, the physical things. We, Satan loves to show us that storm. Amen. All things are yours. You're a joint, joint heir with Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says, guys. And you are Christ's, and Christ is God's. Guys, we've got such an amazing, loving Father. Woo! Again, we can say praise you, praise you, praise you till he brings us home, and we're still not going to be close. What a wonderful cycle, because you are God's. Be not afraid. Sound familiar? Fear not. Sound familiar? It is too, guys, I'm going to pause right here. I was watching a video on the treadmill today. Andrew Womack, I love that brother. And I love him because he is, he has some boldness and he speaks the truth. And I know, I know he hurts some feelings and maybe sometimes words come out of my mouth, rub people the wrong way and hurt your feelings. But guess what? The things that comes out of his mouth and what I go back and watch, it's backed up by the word of God. Guys, and he said it, and I've said it before. If you're walking in fear, you're not walking in faith. And if you're not walking in faith, you're walking away from God. You're walking in the carnal, and that is sin. Walking in fear is sin, and the Bible can back that up multiple places. It is to the drowning man the rescuers come. To the brave swimmer who can fare well alone, he comes not. You know, you won't be that person that can't swim waiting on Jesus to come, or are you that brave swimmer that knows you already got him. Whew. It is a part of God's method to wait till the storm is at its full violence. So did Jesus with his disciples on the lake. There we go. He could have bidden the first angry wave to be calm. Sure, he could have. He's Jesus. He's God. He could have done whatever he want. He didn't have to take a nap. He could have fed um, the first gust of wind to be still. But what a lesson unlearned. Think about that. If Jesus didn't allow them to panic and freak out and wake him up from a nap again, Wake me up from a nap. I'm not a happy individual. And I'm sure Jesus was probably a little upset. It doesn't say he was flipping over tables like he did in the temple. But I'm sure that he did. He said, why, why, why do you still have so little faith? You have little doubt. You, you have so much doubt. You have little faith is what Jesus tells him. He wakes up, tells the storm to be calm, peace, be still. And the disciples, and this is uh, shortly right after they fed the 5,000. Whew. We can sit there and shake our heads and call those disciples knuckleheads, but guess what? They're shaking their heads at us, calling us knuckleheads, guys. Um, what a sense of tender nearness of refuge and safety that would have been lost. That that message had to be delivered. That wasn't a parable. That was a real in-your-face life lesson right there. Remember this. Jesus' disciples thought it that in sleep he had forgotten them. They figured since he was asleep, he done forgot them. Come on. Remember how mistaken they were. Gain strength and confidence and joyful dependence and anticipation from that. Guys, if you got fine, I don't know where that's at in the Bible, if it's in our studies. I don't think it is. There's multiple accounts of that. Find one, meditate on it. And again, I, I, I encourage you all the time to visualize that scenario, visualize that storm, visualize that boat, visualize the disciples freaking out, grown men, most of which were fishermen anyway, afraid because there's water getting in their boat and their best friend, their Lord is taking a nap. This is what we still do, folks. We still do this. Jesus isn't in the boat. He's now in us. And we still freaking panic and don't know what to do. Um, never fear. There it is again. Joy is yours. And the radiant joy of the rescued shall be yours. Amen. Folks, I believe this one is another one that speaks for itself. Please get alone. Read them scriptures. Find that quiet time. If you feel like it, if you're still hungry, you want to read some of the accounts of Jesus in the storm in the boat, go for it. Most of us are probably familiar with that scenario by now. But take that. Let that speak. Today's scriptures speak. This title, guys, this title is really speaking to me. Go forward unafraid. And then again, the background, we need to walk boldly with Jesus. Why? Because Christ is now in us. Amen. So guys, thank you for joining me. Until tomorrow, Thursday the 18th, enjoy the rest of your day. Walk through the rest of this day boldly, no matter what Satan's telling you. Puff your chest out. Stick that chin up. Count on your chest. Say, man, this world's got nothing for me because Christ now lives in me and I'm already victorious. Amen. So until tomorrow, guys, enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see what the Lord says then. I love you.